Good kitten internet, and welcome back to Let's Play Wild Arms 2, where I'm intending to beat it. The game, that is. Um. How's it going? Yeah. OBS really likes resizing itself where it takes up more than just my left monitor for some reason, and I don't know why. A little bit like that. Still on top of my. Paper. What the heck? Okay. So, we are in Lava de Gable. Uh, yep. So we're going to be dealing with a bunch of puzzles. So the left side will rotate twice, or the top side. There we go. The right side will rotate twice when the left side rotates once. Other way around. The right side rotates once when the left side rotates twice. That's the wording I want. This will rotate the other direction. I do not know what directions these things are supposed to be rotated in. Apparently facing the door. Got it. There's no hints about this or anything. Not too surprising now, is it? Moon logic puzzle. Right? We're going to have this face outward. Why? Arr! I have no idea what I'm doing here, and I'm intentionally not looking at a guide. I also notice that there's no random combat at the moment. There's only certain rooms that you can get random combat in. This thing in the center might be the key, but it was already facing it. Dunno. See what's over here. Another situation with these. That rotates left, bottom rotates twice. Yeah. I figured that part out pretty easily. And you come over here, cute. Okay. That did something. I'm guessing those two facing up is what allows you to go forward here. It's a guess. Ooh, green exclamation point. I have the volume up a little high on myself. Morlocks and Orgon Energy. So this part I will actually look at a guide for. Just need to grab one of my Firefox windows. Morlocks. They don't have anything I care about in their weak against fire. Orgon Energy. Don't have anything I care about with against lightning. Got it. And they absorb pretty much everything else. So not hitting everything with fire. Lightning would be fine. Neither of them have any red skills. Right? Yep, neither have any red skills. that up. 
Oh, it's light, not lightning. Dang it, I always do that. All right. We don't have light on. A megaton. Megaton kills everything, right? Yes. Good to death. So, how goes internet? Uh, I've been frustrated this morning a bit. If my theory is right, and this is the mock. Ah. Um. What was I saying? Um, yeah, frustrated this morning. So, what are you? Hyperions and Argoth. See, these are the enemies I don't remember very much of because you can tell already since they're green exclamation point, they're lower level than everything prior to it. Hyperion, they drop war respites, which is very rare. And they're heavily resistant to all elements, absorbing Earth. Argoth. They're weak against electricity. They don't have anything I care about. They're also both lower level than Miracle. Why am I scrolling? Megatons answered everything. I'm serious. Outside of the aliens, the, um... Glugons, or however you pronounce that. There's no regular enemy in the game that isn't, or that Megaton wouldn't one shot. I'm following right wall for reference. No switch on this. Okay. you. Oro runs on? Runs on. Resistant to everything. Has 3550 hit points. It might actually survive. Can't let that happen. Luka is really just here for healing. Like I said, I've never encountered a lot of these enemies. Or I'm following right wall. Same puzzle three times? Really? Not even a different variant or the more complicated version. No, it's the same puzzle three times. There's the save point. I know I've left something behind in here. Not that it really matters, but I'm gonna make it. Let's head back and continue where we were. So yeah, my annoyance. Um, so maybe I'll do a vlog about this later, but I wear unusually sized shoes. And I just ordered a pair of shoes that were mislabeled. It's very obnoxious to me because a lot of shoe makers just mislabel these things. You're big. Doomsday! Yeah. I would not, in fact, be able to one-shot that. Miracle. That is. Pretty sure Cannon can still one-shot it. 
It depends on its hit point. Or, depends. Yep, it's dead. It had 8,000 hit points. And full revive. Is there useful? So, um, yeah, as I was saying, I get really annoyed by manufacturers that just ignore what I ask for. The shoes that fit. Everything needs to face north, apparently. I know I'm missing something in here. You, Cyclops. Well, at least you do have one eye. Cyclops, you have 4,200 hit points, and you drop full revives as well. You know, I never thought Cannon and Miracle were actually that powerful until going through this run, where I'm just one-shotting everything. Whereas, Ashley could one-shot everything, except that that would use ammunition. Same with Brad. And that's a limited resource, technically. I don't want to use that up. Faces. Um, the mages frequently one-shot things, but they can't guarantee the one-shot. We'll surprise them. Probably just put the saber up at the top, too. I'm trying to think. The only characters that can one-shot things are mages and cannon. One-shot without expending resources. Okay. Are the mages and cannon. That's four characters. Bring me back to where I was. Right? Yep. Okay. My mental map is correct. So, um, a poster had asked me to do a detailed analysis of Ashley and his arms. So I will be doing that, although I may not do that before I start another series. Uh, the reason being is that I always start series on series that I played with my father before he died. I typically start those... Actually, I'm look at a map. Uh, I typically start those on the anniversary of his death, which is April, um, April 18th. And I've been doing a running thing with my vlogs, because this isn't technically a vlog, I'm going to be saying this, you know, out of character, that I've been doing a running thing where I'm doing my vlogs three months late. So three months after April 18th is July 18th, which is this coming Sunday, and that's the day I'm going to start playing Vandal Hearts. So, I need to finish this up quickly. Yeah. Okay. Now I see. There are treasure rooms. And I should have just opened them up. That's what rotating the pedestals were for. This is one of them. Oh, I know. That's the pedestal. said treasure room.
don't actually know. So up here is where the safe point is. Well, not this room. This is where I have two figures pointing north. And this room is where the safe point is. Oh, derp, the other doors are the treasure room. I've already forgotten. Alright. I'm for the final boss rush, basically. But first, Azure. Oh, there is one that I haven't unlocked. Bridal gown. I believe is Luca's best armor. Damn, that's a large difference. Did I miss, like, equipment or something at some point in the game? It would not surprise me if I did. Once I get this loot, this is going to be the save that I'm going to base all of my analysis on from now on. I should have everything. Labyrinthos, I think that one's Tim's best. So either there's a large difference in endgame equipment, or I am missing something in the middle. Everybody should be getting their armor other than... Um, the Libra, that's the item that I was talking about that I was missing that makes you immune to status effects. Um, everyone except for Maryville should be getting their armor here. That is... And an equipment. Ooh, that's a large increase to magic resistance. Nice. Now her magic resistance is just garbage. And the lowest in the game? Ooh, no, it's actually higher than Ashley's. We'll see if Ashley's equipment does it. Why do I keep canceling out of the battles? I don't need to. In fact, I don't want to. I'm lives. I'm a. That's Ashley? Nope. Ashley still has to have the higher magic resistance. Let's see if Brad's, which is the one that's locked, is better. Okay. Which one of these did I miss? One here. One there, one down below. I'm get. oh, I know where it's at. It's the entrance. The first one I did because I didn't know where it needed to be rotated. I didn't realize it was gonna make a sound effect when it finished. Okay. I just need to go back to the entrance. That's not hard. Just fast forwarding through because I would like this to be a little faster. The end sequence is fairly long. This video may end up being longer than normal as a result. Megaton. Death, death, death. I am higher level than I should be for reference. Um, I think you're supposed to be about level 50 at the end of this, and I am 55 to 60 on levels. Yeah. There we go. That's the one I was missing. So you can see the frame rate drops in this place. It's ridiculous. This is actually much better than the real PS2. The real PS2, this area runs at about, I don't know, five frames a second. It's ridiculously bad. Oh, wait. The next one.
Hmm. Let's see. What have you thought of Wild Arms 2, by the way? Those of you that have been watching up until the end. Holy crap, it survived? I was not paying enough attention. Not that money means anything at this point. At all. But yeah, what did you think about Wild Arms 2? I definitely don't like it as much as Wild Arms 1. I think that the message in Wild Arms 1 is much more obvious. And Wild Arms 2 almost feels um, more Americanized. It's probably the translation that makes me think that. Alright. 56 hours and 5 minutes. Let's go. Um... Finally made it here. That voice is Irving. If you couldn't tell from the fact that it said Irving's voice. Where? Where are you? Show yourself. The Kuiper Belt was once again trapped in the vessel. But the Kuiper Belt gushed out from the vessel, and now the guy itself is. Uh, its roots have divided and spread to even the Guardian of Mud, Glapid Legable. At this rate, no matter how much we attack the body, the roots will get its energy to endlessly regenerate. First, the three roots extending out from the Kuiper Belt must be cut and the regeneration stopped. I pray for the safety and success of the arms moments. Do this while my will keeps all of the Kuiper Belt from spilling out of the vessel. Irving, what's going on? Well, all I can do is believe what Irving told me, the person who lied about everything and then got his sister pregnant. Necessary to cut the three roots to destroy the main body of the Kuiper Belt. Let's split the party into four now. That's right. We now get to decide who is going to join us for the final battle, and who's going to be fighting at Root by themselves. Unfortunately, I must bring Ashley with me to the main body. Which means I am going to be sending Brad, Lilka, and Tim out, so I can have Cannon and Merivel be my primary characters. Because I did say I'd make sure that they were with me at the end. Brad, Lilka, and Tim. Which means we're not going to have any healers with us. Should be fine. Everything's fine. I've never actually seen Lilka or Tim's text on this, by the way. And yes, this is the final boss sequence. There's basically nothing else left in the game. We've beat every single optional boss. We've beat basically everything. my mind this game doesn't have as satisfying of an ending as Wild Arms 1. That's probably because the game itself's plot is worth And I don't mean that as a pun given that I'm literally in a bit of mud. Technically if you have a turbo controller you can just keep hitting right until you get through. 
There's no risk of falling or anything, mind you. Although I think you do actually take damage if you land in the ground. Alright. We fought this once before. But it's time to fight the encroaching parallel universe. First route. First route is being led by Brad. You're saying that with all this pressure, there's more out there? Yes, this is the final boss battle music. Or is it? This is the Kuiper boss battle music. Hyperion Inferno! Launch. Boost, railgun to face. So this is the most amount of damage Bragg can do on his own without any buffs from anyone else. Not exactly a small amount of damage. But it's not great either. But you noticed, we've defeated the Brute. That's it. And that is the last time we will see Brad fight this game. You notice lack of XP? Notice lack of Gela. And that's the conclusion for Brad. Do you understand why I'm disappointed by this ending? At least this part of the ending. There's more to it. Second route time. Which is Lilka? Negotiated resolution is impossible with all this bickering. They, this has got to be a horrible translation issue because this doesn't make any sense. Ooh, she's injured. I didn't even think about that. Pretty sure the answer is just gonna be Saber until it's dead. Riot does next to nothing in damage. What, two or three shots total? Dark Starbo! That's, I think, the strongest attack? Oh crap, that's a problem. Well, Blue Riot should bring her to condition green at least. It didn't. Removed confusion at least. Let's go ahead and high have her high heal herself. Poison will definitely be removed once. Galactic explosion! Poison will be removed once she gets hit. I wonder if each root actually has more hit points than the previous one. Yep, she's at condition green now. Dual cast. Double saber. Time for the Akatic Rewriter. That will definitely kill it, because that's enough to one-shot it in theory. I think it only has like 12 to 15,000 HP. And that is the conclusion of the game for Luka. No resolution with her sister, if I remember right. Nothing. We will not see her until end credits. Same with Brad. Now for the easiest of the battles. The 
part of the universe they're trying to consume. None of these things make any sense. They've got to be mistranslations. I refuse to believe that the game is that bad at this. I think I want to get rid of the... This one's going to actually take a while because Tim's not very good at large amounts of damage for one target. Stage yourself. Explosion! Unfortunately, Papanka is probably not the greatest of guardians for Tim because High Guardian Chapapanka does nothing. Oh well. Finally time to start using the big guns. For 3,000. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this high combo does nothing. Yeah, it's lucky shot. It would be funny if I actually did lucky shot it. That'll do like 10 damage or something. I was in? Okay. A lot more than I was expecting. Just make a bury yourself. It'll be fine. I really don't like this entire sequence. It's, hey, look, we're going to separate off a third of your party members. You know why? Because screw you, that's why. It's supposed to be that we're all doing this at the same time, but we're obviously not. My melee attacks do a thousand. What the heck? Dark Saber Bow. It's the one that does status effects. Ooh, that's not a great status effect for Tim. I don't think they have any elemental resistance. I take that back. Seriously? Okay. This is going to become a problem. Let's get rid of the these. Electric explosion, that's a lot of damage. Heal up. Electric explosion again. I didn't think Tim's would be the hard one, but it kind of makes sense since Tim's specialty is large areas of effect and not single targets. Hold Lance do more damage than I'm getting? Yeah, it does. Good to know. And we are done with Tim. Yeah, all of the other characters say something very similar, because usually I send Marivel and Cannon off. Yep, little guy is starting to lose cohesion. If I remember right, this is Maria Bull. Friends. 
It's dangerous here. Hurry up and get inside. Uh, your highness. Such a place. Uh, this is... This ghastly thing is the battle risking Filgaia's fate. The battle of... No, sir. Everyone has weakness and frailties. They're humans, just like us. Uh, I don't know. One of them's definitely not human, and one of them is only partially human at this point, so... They're not really human, just like us, but whatever. The humans who shed tears and blood, they get hurt and ragged, but still fight. This, it's not a battle of heroes. It's people just like us fighting. So we have to fight with them. But I am powerless. Fighting is, let's believe, that'll be our battle. Offer a prayer. Intense feelings always reach the intended. The one's prayers and goodwill distance make no difference, no matter how far. There should be a comma there. So, one's prayers and goodwill, distance matters. Ugh. Try that once more. The one's prayers and goodwill, distance makes no difference, no matter how far. I don't want to let go of the hand. Our support, support ah, I can't remember what accent I used for Tony now. Dang it. Our support, ah, our support won't reach from here. We need to move closer. Scott! In my opinion, the power of emotions is simply unrealistic. But not be able to believe in my friends here and now? That is the world worth. It's not logic. It's my own conclusion. Uh, okay, kids, whatever. Look at Red, Cannon, and Marvel. Come back safely. Remember, Ashley has a promise. Speaking of Ashley, these are our characters for the rest of the game. I am going to run as Maryville. Bonk. All right, real puzzle time. This has everything turned once. Means we need to turn things again. That should be it. Yep. Everything needs to face north. So all I did was turn everything where it faces north. Oh yeah, we're injured for some reason. Ah, I actually did end up with Justine, Reftina, and uh, Zephyr at the end. But your gear should change. Honestly, I think you should actually have a bully for You have a Sheriff Star, you have Power Boost. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. Notification alert. Irving? Why? I'm sorry, why? That's what your face is saying. I don't understand. I just don't understand. We fought side by side to protect Filgaia, right? Then why? You're right. I fought for Filgaia too. I'm no different from you on that point. But what are you thinking? What are you trying to do here? I knew of the threat of 
the Kuiper Belt before anyone else. Remember, the game did hint at that fact because Irving was stationed at the um, the uh, observatory in uh, the Sealed Region. That's what it's called. Um, which means he's actually the one that noticed the Kuiper Belt coming. Like the being consuming the a large power is needed, almost as large as Fulgaia. But there are many opinions, as there are people. People aren't strong enough to instantly unify against such an imaginal threat. That's why I created a clearly perceptible threat for people to experience. That was... Terrorist Association Odessa. So, this, I believe... Now, Keep in mind, this is me thinking. I don't know for sure. I don't have any good analysis or anything like that. I definitely don't have a proper translation, but I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be... So, every Wild Arms game has a form of ecological collapse as their theme. At least the first three definitely do. I can't speak to four and five, but I'm pretty sure they do too. I'm pretty sure that this game, it's global warming. And that's actually what they're referring to when it comes to this globe-spanning threat that is threatening Filgaia, they're referring to the globe-spanning threat that's threatening Earth. Warming. An easily understood threat disturbs people more easily. What would happen if the Defenders of Justice showed up? <laughs> yep. You arms guys showed up. People began to unite across the natural, uh, across national boundaries. You already know that. To oppose the Kuiper Belt, all countries set cooperative policies to fight against it. Together. Prison of Mana, Trapezahendron, couldn't have been invoked without the cooperation from all three nations. What you've done is wrong! People have been hurt from your plan. Some have even lost their lives. It was all to protect Vilgaia. We protect the future of humanity. And sacrifice an individual for the larger goal. If I could have gotten the power to fight, I'd have. If I could have gotten the Arcid Lamb, I would have taken such measures. But without becoming a hero, I won't be able to save Vilgaia. Remember. This game is all about the concept of a hero as well. Uh, what? What is this? It's clear that the physical attacks on the parallel universe and conceptual being are meaningless. So think of the universe as a life form. Consider it a spirit and seal it in a vessel. In essence, the flesh that should have been destroyed is created. What I suggested to Odissa, by using the demon summoning my sister will have inside her, by making Altesia a vessel, the abominable life form will... Stop! How far will you go to achieve your goals? You saying you offered your own sister as a sacrifice? Yup. Wasn't to be a sacrifice, but to be a hero. Not the Sword Magus, but the Madonna of Destruction, summoned under Valeria's name. Or... Mother, for sure. I think this was supposed to be a reference to... Wild Arms 1. But a really badly mangled one. Encroaching Parallel Universe, Kuiper Core. Anastasia never wanted anything like this. So, yep, that is in fact a giant beast with a fetus sitting inside of its glass tube. And controlled by Irving. The great boss of Wild Arms 2 is Irving Vold Valeria and Anastasia Valeria. I don't expect you to forgive me. In order to save Bilgaia, I had no choice. 
we have to destroy the Kuiper Belt on our own. Before my consciousness gets swallowed up. I'm pretty sure it's too late. I know myself better than anyone else. But it's strange. No, uh, no, we'll slash each other. I have no fear or regrets. I'm actually quite happy. I feel fine! I feel happy! I'm happy that I've had the opportunity to be with you all, rather than I'm sad that we won't see each other again. Really happy I got to be with you all and that we could protect Little Gaia together. Now excuse me, please kill the fetus that I created with my sister and infected with a demon in order to contain an encroaching parallel universe. Have I mentioned how outlandish this plot seems recently? I promised Anastasia that I'd stop Valeria's suffering. Irving, Alticia, let's fight together. All right. <sighs> okay. There's not actually a reason to go after the shoulders in this case, because it's not like XP matters at the end, even though this does grant XP. But I'm doing it anyway. Maryville, because we know that this thing can do status effects. I am not protected against them. Oh, yeah. Soft. Atmospheric reentry. Okay, it's Dark Star Bow, so the one that can. Yeah, the problem is I don't have healing for this group. So I'm actually going to have to use heal berries frequently. And status lock cannon. That should be good enough. Oh wait. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Status lock cannon. Dark Star Bow will no longer do status effects to us. Alright, Ashley. Morphin' time. Really wish I had items that did area effects. Would've been nice. Maribel. All right, so our goal is just dismember this thing. damage. Alright. Ashley, start dismembering. Cannon, continue dismembering. Maraville. Maraville, you're on healing duty just because Cannon and Ashley do way more damage than you against single targets. Way more damage. Green Inferno. Play Cannon. We're going to have you heal Maryville. Maryville. Asgard 2. Let's go been a long time since I've actually seen Maripal use her force abilities. Let's do it. 
mad lucid. We don't ever get to see his abilities during this run because I kept not using Ashley. Or Asgard. Hey, Earth Golem friend. Such a chunky boy. As the boss just goes flying. It does a decent amount of damage, too. Alright. Ashley, left shoulder. Cannon. You know what? Just big berry yourself. You have enough hit points to justify it. And Marivel, you know what? Let's use that lucky card, because we actually do get XP from this battle, by the way. Because that makes sense. And or Ashley should basically be regenerating. Dark Star Bow, which does next to nothing in damage. Atmospheric re-entry! Boom, 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 Yep, Marivel needs healing badly. I mean, there's abilities to life drain, but I don't think that does enough. I'm gonna heal myself first, but I may end up life draining next. Yes, more crits. Riot. Blue Riot does kind of meh damage. Alright, let's see. What do we have for drain ability? So we've got... Life Drain. Full Drain obviously doesn't do anything. I think immune to sleep. I don't know. Try Life Drain. Assuming that, you know, we actually need to worry about it at all. Nope. <laughs> that tends to happen. Often, you know, a casual 24,000 damage. Got nothing that on what's coming up, though. 300,000 XP! Congratulations, Canon, on reaching level 61. You are finally higher level than Tim. I think that makes Canon the highest level character in the game now. We did it. Everything's done. Everything's cleaned up. There's absolutely no problems left to solve. All plot points have been taken care of. You'll notice that my hands are off of the controller at this point. Everybody comes back. Nobody's harmed. We're perfectly fine. Ignore the fact that Ashley's technically at one hit point. Time to walk back out of this place, right? Hey, we won, right? We're able to save Filgaia. Everyone's. Were we wrong? Could we not have done that? Because we won. Right. Right? Because we won, we were right, isn't. 
Everything that happened here is fact. All there is to it. Didn't win or lose. Just over. Finished. Yeah. Oh, right. Forgot about that part. Remember, Ashley's a demon. And this is the point where the blaze of disaster starts. Thought, thought the game forgot about that, did you? Whoa, what in the world happened? Where is everyone? Where am I? <laughs> it's the world where I am. It's where the destruction began. Who are you? Lord Blazer. You ask who I am? That's harsh after we've been together for so long. And even fought, too. No! You're the disaster that turned Philgaia red with fire! <laughs> I've finally been freed from those chains. Great to have a body again. I owe you my thanks. It was my good fortune to live inside your body after being trapped beyond the event horizon. The negative feelings that grew inside you during our battles is the food that sustains me. The feelings? You're saying I helped resurrect you? <laughs> Not just you. Whirling inside all humans are the most unsightly and strong energy forces. In your battles, you've seen the true nature of people, and it's that negativity, ah, negativity that I fed on. I'll give you the honor of witnessing the world burning to oblivion. Stop it now! Are you gonna draw it? That abominable Arcadlam. That is definitely the absolute perfect sword to destroy me. But you... you know, but don't say you forgot that you weren't able to draw the Arcadlam. Once you had my strength, the strength you tried to destroy, then you finally got the sword. But now that I'm free of your body, you're only a mere human. You can't draw the Arcadlam. Argetlam is meant to be wielded by the Hero of the Sword. Lament the era of no heroes, and live in fear of the future that will burn to smithereens. Oh boy, does he like chewing the scenery. I really like Lord Blazer's lines, because this is the way a final boss should be. Definite that I'm not the hero sword chosen by the sword. Then why struggle? Don't resist me. Except the future. Uh, the world we live in, the all-important Vilgaia, it's not such a puny world that's sustained by the power of only a hero. This world is full of interactions and exchanges of the people and their thoughts, so the power that sustains the universe exists in Vilgaia. The power of all life. Time without heroes. Yeah, that's what you said. No. No, not without heroes, but an era that doesn't need heroes. We don't need a hero. There's no value in a world protected by such things. If everyone's hearts become one, then we can rise and stand together. We can support the world without sacrificing a hero. Because miracles can happen. We can never make the same mistake Irving made. Sparkles. Hey, look, it's the five party members. I can tell now. Our hearts are becoming one. The Argent Lamb isn't something to be pulled out by the hero alone.
That's right. It's boss battle time. But this battle's gonna go just a wee bit differently than before. And I'm gonna play around with this battle. This is also one of my favorite end themes. That the figure of the hero of the sword? From Market Lamb? Let's go. Let's all go and fight this together. Welcome to the final form of Ashley, the sword magis herself. Can't change equipment, can't run away. But Ashley has all of the abilities from the sword magis. Immunity from death. Not instant death. Death. Ups your speed. Or sorry, um, resilience. With your with wind protection for all. Ups defense and magic resistance values for all. Heal yourself. Along with all status effects. Let's start buffing. Because really, all you need to do is impulse to win. But I'm not going to do that because I'm cooking around for a bit. Negative flare. That's the problem, is that he actually dispels. Heal myself. It's Ashley finally has a healing ability. Actually, it works fairly well, too. So one thing that I wish that I can do is... I also have a full heal. Um, one thing that I wish that I can do, I'm going to use the full heal just because. Blade heal! Bloop. Um, I actually see Ashley's stats, because I don't know what they are. I actually don't know if it's possible to lose this battle, so I'm going to try really fast. You'll notice that Ashley's actually taking a decent amount of damage, but, um, yeah. Lord Blazer actually can't hit Ashley, for reference, with the normal melee attack. Also, what the heck is with that model? Just saying. It doesn't matter how much I attack him. Uh, technically, it probably does. I did save state earlier, so I wanted to see what would happen if Ashley got defeated. 36 hit points. Melee attack, which does nothing. No, I'll save state here, just for fun. It actually goes first. Does he not actually use anything other than attack while I'm this low? The game actually thought of it, that's hilarious. Oh, okay. Just bad luck. Ashley is exhausted. It does require a Gimmel coin. Interesting. But I'll blade heal myself instead and go back up to full. This is why there's like, it doesn't actually matter what I do. So let's actually finish the final boss, shall we? The sword attack with the power of friends. We actually got to see, um... Anastasia used this before, only it's slightly different in Ashley's hands. Watch. A Dwight, but... That's it! That's it, exactly! The Arcate Lamb isn't a weapon to bury demons. 
but gathering the will to live and to power, it becomes the key to open the door to the future. It's not a power to be wielded alone, the power for everyone to wield together. So every time I use Impulse, I get a cutscene. And that happens. Does just slightly more damage than Ashley's normal attack. Just slightly. We're gonna be impulsing every turn, basically. Uh, except when I need to heal. Very, has it arrived? Has my prayer arrived? It won't arrive when I pray alone. We'll pray together as one. Everyone. Everyone was born on this star, and everyone and lived here. That's a bad translation. I can tell that translation because it should be planet and not star, but... Another 11,000 damage, as you do. Remember, Ashley still has all of his normal equipment, so he's regenerating still. <laughs> well, all of his normal force point abilities, I should say. Let's go ahead and heal a little bit. Impulse. I think it's five impulses total. This is impulse three. Oh, what the hell accent did I use for idiotic Terry? Um... Everything depends on being alive. Only when you're alive do you get to fall in love or get to fight with others. Tomorrow comes because today's life light starts the creation of the future, then this light should be delivered to those battling at the end of the today. Door. I really like Ashley's model like this, by the way. It's especially better in the uh, the upscaled 3D where it's actually rendering all of the pixels. Or most of the pixels because there's actually some errors because they didn't care about the errors because you were watching this on a CRT where everything blurred together anyway. Heal up slightly more. Yeah, I don't care. Impulse. So this is Impulse 4. You can clearly feel it. Right now, all the souls in Fugai are trying to join together. Stopping all life from fighting, simply to keep alive. We're not powerless, we have the strength of our united hearts. Take this power and throw it against the wars confronting you. So that's all of Guild Galad that's just given up their souls. You know, just harvesting everybody's souls on the planet, as you do. I know that's not actually what it is. Also, what is it with Lord Blazer and his ear wings? Ear wings. That design is just... Mm, oh, weird. So if I am correct, this is the last one. I'll save state here. No, it isn't the last one. This battle is to save our precious world. That's why we must fight too. We don't need to be protected by someone special. Because it's important, so very important that we must protect it ourselves. If someone has to be the hero, then anyone should be able to become the hero. The prayers must have reached them, right? Everyone's still get fighting to protect Gilgaia now. Yeah, it must actually be more than five, then. I thought it was only five. That's definitely not the last one. Forgot I actually still have all of Ashley's equipment on. First charge.
Impulse. Is this the last one? Nope. We're not gonna push it. Right, we're not going to push it all off on the dude. Because it's so important, we're going to protect it with our own hands. I'm not sure we can handle it on our own. But if, so if we get in trouble, help us out, dude, okay? When you get into a bind, the young arms could use it to help you out in return. We like Bogaya just like everyone else. Oh, that's all of the crew of the Valeria Chateau. Okay, so it's seven total, I think. We're running out of people to do this with. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 don't care. I think this is the last one? If not, we might be dead. Yep. I love it. This world and all, and the life we live, and actually all. I like today better than yesterday. And I like the unknown tomorrow even more. Let's all head off into the tomorrow together. Everyone together! You know how I said that I knew it wasn't a 9999 system? This is how. Ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine damage. If I remember correctly, the Blaze of Disaster does not have hit points. This music's only played at end of game, by the way. Now, why in the world Ashley had to grow long hair? Well, that's because they used the same character model for Ashley and Anastasia. You just can't easily tell unless if you think about it. Anyway, um, if I remember correctly, the Blaze of Disaster, Lord Blazer himself, does not have a maximum amount of hit points. Like, as in, the game will have it, but you can't actually reach it. That's the reason why I save stated, because I want to see if I can actually get it to end without using Impulse that last time. I don't think you can, though. I'm almost certain it's an infinite amount of hit points, and it just doesn't keep track. Bloop. Sadly, that very brief glimpse of the out-of-combat character model is the only time you get to see Ashley as the uh, Sword Magister himself. No. Finally over. We won. Ashley won, ain't eh? I wasn't the only one who won. Everyone here and everyone waiting for us, and oh, the victory that we won together. I'm not a hero. The future we grabbed hold, uh, grabbed hold of for ourselves. Oh, come on now, give me a break. Don't hassle me. I refuse to ever do such unsuitable work. Ugh. Let's go home together. Let's all go home to Filgaia. You're on Phil Guy. You're in Phil Guy. You're in the center of the planet. But this is the end sequence. How long have I been recording? One hour and 14 minutes. Yeah, this is going to be a bit longer, but that's okay. The world we've been waiting for. This also comes up if you teleport out of, um, or if you leave Glove of the Gable for reference. We didn't. We had no need to. Time for the end sequence. Yeah, Phil Guy is a little rough for rare wear right now, as usual. Um, where's Tim? Oh, poor Colette. 
Eh, we're walking back. It's fine. What? What? It's okay. They're holding hands! Ugh, not safe for work. Dulude right there. Never mind the fact that there was a sex scene earlier in the game, and the game talks about incest. That was the... Rain finally slacked. More than having destroyed the Kuiper Belt or Lord Blazer, seeing everyone's laughter again made me realize it's really over. I have no control anymore. But you all aren't the only ones laughing. Hey. I have someone waiting for me, and when I heard someone saved a place for me to return to, I broke into laughter too. said thanks to me, but I said thanks back. That's not so strange. Because in that moment, that's what I want to say. Everybody blinks. Just blinking things. But that's when they got told about the end result of Irving Hold Valeria, I believe. And 21 gun salute type of thing, as they salute his memory. And apparently don't care about Anastasia at all. No, it's it, both of their memories, but still. The Chateau, which wasn't flying up until recently again. Flying off. So everything was disclosed. Really wish it wasn't so slow. At the beginning of ever and the end of this battle was the sin named Valeria. This sin was called a hero. Ugh. If the lives in Filgaia survive because of this sin, then its continued life is its atonement. It's good for the sin to live in, on those atonement. Those who can atone are... The cross that is too heavy to bear alone. No longer so when everyone on this star supports it. It's a planet, not a star. Wanderer, that's what planets mean. Leap now, the blood of Valeria. No one needs a hero anymore now that they've realized they're mine. If the darkness meant to destroy Filgaia's future is dismantled, chant a peace hoped for will be heard. Yeah, this is an overly optimistic look at Filgaia. Even Wild Arms 1, it was basically, there's a lot of work to do still. This is more, hey, look, we have peace. It's time to start doing all of that work. Let's start moving boxes around. I do like this ending claim, though. Ah! I have a soup ladle. Marina is going to learn how to fight. Yep. 
Marvel directing people to move crates. No, over there. The ending is so silly. No, over there. Yeah, that's it. No idea what the point of that scene was. And the sun comes out. For the first time in a long time. Marvel should probably get back indoors. No matter what you say, humans are strange creatures. This part of this only happens if you have Marivolt. Besides being frail, people get lost along the way and make false moves. Eh. I've already forgotten what Marivolt's voice is. I apologize for everything. Then they don't, sometimes don't realize that their mistakes and can, and, oh, sorry. Then they sometimes don't realize their mistakes and hurt those that are close. At the same time, they know how to link arms and band together. You ask why, must he answer so? Eh. While acknowledging their own weaknesses, when they make and take aim at a far off goal, they join hands. Hmm. Maybe they should try skipping. Those who extend a hand and those who take the hand can't be done without trust. That's a sentence. It has some grammar in it. It's not the correct grammar. Hold on there, just a minute. It's not clear if humans are weak or strong from this. Ugh. Better do more research. Well then, I'll try to explain it. A crimson noble's time is eternal, after all. And I'm the last one, and I am... By the way, you will have more backstory from both Anastasia and Marivel in Wild Arms 3. And only them. Don't mind Brad, he's just showing off for his boyfriend. Poppy! Oop. Notice, he started moving to pick it up. It's okay, real Brad. They're holding hands in the ending. I don't know why the tree fell, but you know, whatever. Broken clock starts to move to some rhythm. Clock that had stopped like that starts to move. Stories fall always start suddenly. Focus your eyes, listen closely, and pay attention. The life starting now is even more unpredictable than the battle. To be honest, if I were thrown out on my own, I'd be apprehensive. This isn't my world anymore. Ah. Yet, that doesn't mean I'd just stop. You're on my side. Better still, I have friends who will fight beside me. Next time, I'll have them help. I'm gonna be the only one to lift that longboard. A real hero is very cool, but I'd never be able to fill that role. Oh, well, all a sham, I guess. That's not so bad. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just standing on the telescope, looking up at the stars.
Okay, let's fight. No, no, I, I actually didn't want to fight. I brought you up here as a date. No. Go away, you impudent asshole. Things to change? To go from the past to the future? Is for time to pass. Yeah, that sounds deep. Not only me. Everyone will eventually go their own way. Right? I know. I'm not crying. I'm okay. I'm cool. It's... That's because it's not goodbye, but so we meet again. No matter where you go, it's not an end, but a beginning. Hmm. I'm happy that we're all departing for our new lives together. Hmm. Just dawned on me that... Hmm. I mean, I was lucky enough to meet everyone here who I love with all my heart. Waiting for Loka's lines to finish before I continue that thought. So, I played this toward the end of my high school life when I was looking at moving away from Florida and starting to go someplace else. Tim's just slowly moving off toward the right. Well, this is time for goodbye. Bye! Bye! Everybody, bye! Why is Lilka and Maraville going the same path? Because Maraville is optional for that scene. Where's Cannon, you say? Pretty sure she's on top of that arch. Nope. There she is, okay. Oh, where'd everybody go? Y'all, wait up for me! The King of Maria Bull has officially announced the Dissolution of Arms. This is the only lines of text that happened afterward. Even if this didn't happen, we would all eventually pursue our own destinies. But yeah, I played this after leaving Florida, or before leaving Florida. So today's goodbye isn't sad for me. It was really sad for me to say goodbye to my friend, and I've lost contact with almost all point. But even for a moment, even if it was only for a moment, our hearts were once joined as one. That was creepy. That was a lot of heartbeats. And even if we aren't heroes, we accomplished a major feat. We join our souls, we can accomplish things even a noble hero can. Like low level challenge Ashley for most of the game. No matter where we go, if we join our hearts, we'll always be together. That's true in some ways, but sometimes you need more than just your hearts joined. And. Yeah, dealing with the pandemic definitely made me miss people a whole heck of a lot, even though I know that they were sort of with me and I can always talk to them, but I couldn't be with them in person. So some of these things are overly optimistic and don't really ring true. Back to the town of Maria. The kitty! That always tries to run away. Uh, looking at, why are you just standing there? Oop, time to go by the bakery. La 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 la, we are normal townspeople, la la la. Ashley and, um, Marina. 
Oh, Marina? Have I changed? Nope, I don't have control. Uh, yeah, you have. You're, you're kind of different, you know? You're level 57 instead of level 1. Look more mature. I think you're actually taller. Oh, wait, let's see. No, the sprite height did not change in the game. Your kiss is, uh, it's a bit further away. So yeah, I think you grew, got taller. End credits. So, the final scene is actually slightly different for the Japanese version compared to the American version, but it's only slightly different. Namely, this has words. And all, obviously they don't have the translation credits at the start like everything else. Um, the little anime cutscenes that you're seeing on the right side are actually full screen in the Japanese version, if I remember right. So yep, Ashley ended up retiring to work in Marina's Bakery. Savior of the world... Baker. But they have to pair everybody up, so that's the way it's going. He's also very uncoordinated, even though he should have stupid high agility. Whatever. And Luca, who is falling asleep in a library with the, I think that's supposed to be a picture of her sister, but it's so pixelated you can't tell. I mean, the original is also pixelated, so it's not like there's any chance of being able to see it no matter what. This is a very pixelated sequence. Urapon, utility programmer. And Brad, being all manly by chopping wood and making a back of toothpicks, apparently. And writing in a journal? And falling asleep, maybe? Hard to tell. That's Tim and Muriel. Muriel? Already forgotten her name. And Puka. You can't forget about Puka. Working on a farm. With cows. Cannon at the bar after a barroom brawl where nobody else is left standing other than Cannon. Yeah, that sounds about right. Drinking the hard stuff, although I don't see any milk there. And there's Maryville with Hob and Knob underneath an umbrella because, well, vampire. Uh, that's Tim in the background, if I remember right. Camera with pictures of everybody's travels. Photos from everybody, including... Irving and Anastasia. I don't know who took the pictures, though. They never actually mentioned that. There's a knife there. And... Part of a gun, I guess. But there's more. This is a really long ending, by the way. 
Hopefully, editor me remembered to throw that in the comments when I upload this. The ending is over half of this video. And there was very little left. Oh, this is Maria Bull. Apologies for all the shaking. It's the way the deinterlacing is working. So, some time has passed. You can tell by trees actually growing. And there being a rainbow. And blue skies. And flowers growing. One year later. So if I remember right, all of Wild Arms 2 takes place over the course of like one year. Maybe even less than a year. It might have been six months. So the Arket Lamb is in a stone. In a grove. Ah. It's been a long time since we've been together like this. We're all a year older and look exactly the same. I can't believe a year has passed already. Where is Tim in that scene? Oh, I see his ribbon. Yep. No! The one year anniversary of Irving and now Ticia's death. Kind of sad. But hey, look, I get to see people. Yay! Okay, like this? Isn't that kind of an important sword? Yeah, it'll be fine. Won't someone steal it, Sid, if someone just left it here on the grave? You know... It doesn't come out that easy, so that's no problem. Didn't you watch the beginning part of this game at all? Blink. Blink. Oop, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, running late. Running late, I've got kidlets. Yep, babies ever after, apparently. Again, I have no control over anything right now. It's Ashley's bad habit to show up late on important occasions. But, babies. But, oh, how cute! Apparently one of the baby's hands just reached up. I never noticed that because you couldn't tell on a CRT. Everything was a blur. I could barely tell that they were holding anything at all. Blue sky. Something so common should be so... <laughs> well, for me, it's a large enemy. <laughs> have to wear all these clothes and be covered up. Oh, so right. Blinks. Lots of blinks. The tale of the ordinary continues forever. That's why it's ordinary. So this, and from the past to the present, and well, this ending bothers me. Well, into the future, as you can tell from the baby that I'm staring at. This ending bothers me because it trivializes the rest of the game. The hero didn't save Filkaya. It was all of us living here in Filkaya that saved it. I mean, that message is fine. The fact that the world doesn't need heroes, that is an excellent message. It's reinforced throughout the game, that's great. I believe there's great significance in that. It's the fact that everything went back to normal. Every other Wild Arms game, you basically look back and go, holy crap, this world has been horribly scarred. And take a lot of work to get back together. Hey, hey! In Wild Arms 2, bam, it's back. They had twins, right? Girl and a boy, have you decided on a name? Yes, they're doing what you think they're doing. 
Blink, blink. Oh, oh yeah, right. Names. That's important. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Yeah, Miraville in this scene is not optional, by the way. I guess it's uh, oh, kind of embarrassing. I've forgotten my kids' names. What? The names of these kids are the sweetest and purest in all of Logaya. Hopefully I don't get copyright struck from the music playing because I have to be quiet for so long. Really? Well, I guess. You didn't say them out loud, so they're unpronounceable then? It's supposed to be Anastasia and Irving. Even if they get along, lost along the way, be sure to protect them. Because I'm disappearing! Peace! No. Um, I think a lot of this is translation issues. We're never alone, right? I really want to know what a good translation of this game would have been like. I'm not a hero. The protagonist of this endless tale is... Anon. Or Marivelle. One of the two. Actually, Marivelle would probably be the appropriate answer. And we end on a shot of the Arcet Lamb. The end. Um. Yeah. I don't know if I would still dislike the ending if I saw a real translation of it instead of this horrible hack job. But it just bothers me. An extra file containing the game clearance data will be created. Is that okay? Yes. The extra file is reviewing the movie and the data from clearing the game. It's not possible to return to the game from the extra file. We recommend either creating a new file or else choosing a file to write over. So I'm going to be saving it on the second memory card slot so we can analyze it later on. And also, because I'm going to go back through and find all of the monsters that I missed. Because I've definitely missed a good chunk of monsters. We're going to load that up really fast. Yeah. Voice is a little hoarse from talking so much. Alright. So this is the end file. Levels 58 through 61. When he leveled up, his luck dropped. That's awesome. Yeah, I had more personal skill points that I could have spent at the end, but why? The album, you can see, there's a lot of question marks thrown in here. So at some point, I will probably go back through and figure out what all of these monsters are. I've completed 79%, so that's better than I think my other saves, but not great. I also don't like the fact that they don't tell you what things have red skills. Merrivilles, and since I am planning on doing more analysis later, probably not this week, but I don't know what this week's gonna bring. Um, I would really like to know what red skills I'm missing. I'm probably missing some, given that I have some that the guides don't even mention. So, yep. Anyway, that's been Wild Arms 2. All 57 hours and 28 minutes of it. I think my first time playing through the game, I was at like 65. So while yes, I was going through a little fast, I also slowed down because I was speaking all the lines instead of reading them to myself or things like that. I hope you've enjoyed this internet. And I'll talk to you next time. Remember, the next game that we're going to be playing is... About to say Wild Arms 3. No, we are definitely not jumping into Wild Arms 3. Wild Arms 3 is going to be a year plus from now. 
the next game that we're jumping into is actually going to be Vandal Hearts. Um, for Wild Arms 3, I want to play this with my partner. I've told them that before. I don't know if they'll be able or want to join me because they don't really play console RPGs anymore, but I'm hoping that, that we can do this. But again, that's year plus from now. I'm not doing that anytime soon. So if you have a game that you would like to recommend that I play through, that's we'll go with mid 2000s and older. Especially if it's a PC game or an obscure PlayStation 1 game or something like that. Let me know. I'll uh, add it to my list at the very least and we'll see. Anyway, I've been Aetherspoon. Hope you've enjoyed this extra long video of 1 hour and 47 minutes. Talk to you next time, Internet. Bye. You're out.